Okay, Bezrat Hashem, Nase, Venatsliach. We're a little bit pressed for time because we want to get in the Minchat Aaron and also the Parasha. So, Bezrat uh, Hashem, that this lesson will be to the Atzlacha of Pesi, Penina, Bad Brendel, Dov Shmuel, Ben Sara Ita, Aaron Ben Pesi, Penina, Yehuda, Miriam, Shlomi, and Ruchel, the children of Pesi, Penina, as well as to the success in the Fua of Kava, Bat Geula, Gila. The question is today, as we we are learning the the questions and answers of Minchat Aaron of Rabbi Aaron Rosenfeld, who is the grandfather. Oh, he's famously known as Arav Miyafo. He's also the grandfather of our good friend Pessy, uh, and she brought me this book as we continue to learn this uh, the the Dalachot here in Siman Shin Nun Hey. And there's a question of Shailot Shuot and the questions and answers. And the question is, Sheila, Im mutar leyashev beparuka, or bifrat levarich bracha beparuka? Wig. So, the question is, for a guy that wears a wig, is he allowed to sit with a wig and to make a bracha? I mean, his head is covered, right? He's got the, the carpet on top, right? So does that count? Can a person make a bracha while he's wearing a wig? Okay, let's see. Teshuva. Beveheret tev siman bet. Katuv. Shea peruka nechshav ke kisui. It says, he brings over here, that the beheret tev brings it, that the wig counts as a head covering. U mikol makom nechon izher mishu marit ha'ayin. He says, but regardless, a person should be very careful for marit ha'ayin. Meaning, when somebody looks at you, just from a distance, and he sees you, whether you wear, whether he knows you have a wig, or you don't have a wig, they can't, right? But if they see you eating with your head is not covered, it's mar'it ayin, something is visible, it seems, uh, it, it's something other than what it really is. So mar'it ayin, like at the same, like for example, you don't want to be standing on top of your, let's say your stove is completely off on Shabbat, right? But you, and you use it just to hold the, the pots on top of it. And then on Shabbat, right before you pour it out, you're moving it around, or you're, you know, you're, you're smelling it. Maybe somebody from the outside window is going to say, are they cooking on Shabbat? It's a mar'it ayin, right? You're looking at it. So you don't want to, to, for people to fall on that because they can say, oh, wow, oh, this guy is religious. He cooks on Shabbat. I'm not so religious. From him, I learned that I can cook on Shabbat, right? You want to be careful. Mar'it ayin is something that we are very careful with as Jews. Here too, the rabbi says that even though that um, that the uh, uh, technically the 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 wig counts as a head covering, but we have to be careful for marit ayin. He continues to say, "Ubesefer pachad itzchak." He's bringing out a different book. Pachad itzchak katav da yoshev paruka ki yoshvim berosh megule. He says no. He holds of the opposite opinion. Somebody who sits with a wig is actually like as if he's sitting without a head covering at all. He says that, and he says that he brings from the Sidur of the Shra Kadosh, that it, this is not the reason because of Marit Ayn that we consider it that he's not wearing anything. Because most of the people in the world do have uh, 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 a wig. And I have to stop right here and say, uh, probably maybe up until 20 or 30 years ago, wigs were very popular, even for men. Also from a few centuries ago, there were actual wigs for men. But since hair plugs, things have changed, and more people are going for hair transplants rather than wearing wigs. They're very, very outdated. I mean, you might see some older men that still have something from the 60s or 70s or even 80s, but it's very rare that you find men wearing uh, wicks today because of technology. So he says that uh, he says the, he says over here, our custom has has become that we are very stringent that a person should not make a blessing and say God's name without a head covering, even though that he has a wig. And even though it's common that most people, most men wear a wig and people know that he has a wig and it could count as a, as a kippah, he says no. The, the common uh, practice or the common minhag has been not to mention God's name and we should not budge from it. Continues to say, 
Siman Lamed Chet, Katav Nami, brings another source that he wrote a uh, different, uh, uh, to add to this, the Hashuv Kis Kisui, that it is, again, he's bringing uh, uh, two or three different sightings on this uh, wig thing. He says that, no, the, the, head, the, the wig actually does cover, uh, does count as a head covering. He says that it became a, a custom that people now are making blessings without actually wearing a hat. Here we go. Back in the days, a respectable man would wear a top hat. Who would go in the street without a top hat? It would, it's very distinguishing. It also it shows with the type of profession that you're holding. It was very telling and it was very respectable. Not like nowadays. He says, but even though that it was uh, uh, the way of the world that a person would never, never make a bracha without a, a, a hat, he says, but furthermore, he wants to say that uh, specifically on this inyan that we're discussing right now, which is the wig, a person should not make a blessing with a with just a wig on, he must have a head covering, and also he should be careful not to walk for a mot without the kippah. He's saying just because he's wearing a a wig doesn't mean that he that there's another stringency. We know that a person should not walk for a mot without a head covering. So he says that a person is not only transgressing on on that making a bracha. Uh, without uh, with just the wig on, but he says yes. Also, be careful not to walk for amot without a kippah. Finally, b'shelot shuvot ma'ash katav gedei shipra nasato en lachshosh klach kol kach lemarit ha'ain. He says, however, if somebody's livelihood is in question, right? If let's say for some reason the guy is holding a job, working in an office, that they're going to tell him, hey, you know, for some reason he can't wear a kippah in the office or in the workplace on that particular case the if he has a a, a a chance that he might lose out on some livelihood then we don't worry so much about and we're a bit more lenient on that bottom line this might be an outdated halakha but I, I, I again what we're learning here is some interesting halakhot from the Shailot and Shuvot. I think that's what's keeping this series interesting, is that each time we're able to dig up an interesting question, and over here that might not be relevant, it's still good to know uh, that these are things that people used to deal with back in the days. Okay?